introduce you to some of the concepts regarding the AP macro exam and um, its format, the tips that I have on how to succeed at it, and just things to keep in mind when you're taking the test. So to start off, the test is in two sections. Uh, there is a multiple choice section. There are 60 multiple choice questions of which you are given 70 minutes to complete that. Notice how you have more minutes than you have questions, and that's to give you insight into how long you should spend on each question, just over a minute. Secondly, the multiple choice question counts for about two-thirds of the score. So unlike some other APs that you might be taking, for example, in AP government, the multiple choice is only worth about 50%, this exam is a little bit different. So that's why the easy topics, things like circular flow and you know, the basic questions concerning opportunity costs or a basic determinant of demand, so on and so forth, are really important that we get correct because the difficult questions are definitely ones we're going to spend a lot of time on thinking and we're going to need that extra time and also um, that extra thinking to get the question correct. Secondly, you have a free response section. There are three free response questions and you are given 60 minutes to complete this portion. So this clearly would be the other third of the score. The three FRQs though are not all equal in size and in scope. So the first FRQ um, is affectionately called the long form FRQ. And uh, the College Board recommends that you take about half of the time to answer the long form FRQ. You're not timed, it's not like they're saying, okay, you have 30 minutes to do the first one and then you have 30 minutes to do the la last two and we're gonna give the last two to you after the 30 minutes. Rather, they just recommend that's how you allocate the time on your own. Now, I have found that I've had some students that didn't even need 25 minutes for a long form FRQ. Some FRQs are more difficult than others, but for the most part, they all have something in common. They're a much more cumulative question, and what I mean by that is that they tend to assess the entire course in one question, um, starting with basic economic, um, basic economic principles. I didn't mean to write the word question. I meant to write the word entire course. Um, to more complicated topics, like, for example, monetary policy and the changing of interest rates and what that's going to do to aggregate demand and aggregate supply in the economy. So... We won't really do a long form FRQ um, in the beginning of the course here, but I will show you an example of one in a second, and that will give you a good idea as to what those look like. The next two, uh, questions two and three, are obviously a little bit shorter because we only have half of the time left, and they recommend spending about 25 minutes for both of those together. And those are a little bit more single topic oriented. So for example, you might have an FRQ that's only about international trade. You might have one that's only about fiscal policy or monetary policy or GDP. So I'll show you what those look like. In terms of what we're going to do in this class, in order to fully get an idea of what this exam feels like. What I do in class is a miniature version of the, of the AP exam. So what I do is I give you 20 multiple choice questions in 30 minutes. Um, actually, I wrote that wrong. That's 25 minutes. It's 25 for both halves. And then I give you either one FRQ that's a long, or I give you two of the short FRQs. And that's what you guys are going to have on the first unit test, because again, we're not ready to do the long. And then I give you 25 minutes to do that. And I give you the two parts separately. So we all get time for 25 minutes. If you finish it sooner, you finish it sooner. And then we all start the second part together. So we're on the clock. You have to use a pen for your FRQs. You are not allowed to use pencils. So you have to use dark blue or black ink. That's a requirement by the College Board, and it's also a requirement in this classroom. So just know that those are the things that you've got to do. 
The multiple choice, we don't use Scantron for it in here, but they do on the test, so obviously you'll need a pencil. You can use either for me. It doesn't really matter for the multiple choice. So just know that when you come into an exam, uh, you're going to need to have a pen and a pencil. So let me show you what some of these FRQs look like. So I'm going to exit out of this little show here. And I'm going to head on over to my Adobe and show you guys an example of a free response question. So these are from 2010. And um, you'll notice they've got sort of their college board hoopla there. Something I want to point your attention to is that originally they used to have kids separating the time into two segments. So on old FRQs, you will see planning time 10 minutes, writing time 15 minutes. They actually got rid of that. What they used to do is give kids the FRQs and make them uh, put their pencils down and not have any writing implements and just read the FRQs for 10 minutes. They got rid of that rule. They don't do that anymore. Now they just give you 60 minutes and you divide the time however you want. The other thing that's really important is labeling. And right here at the beginning in the directions, they explain the time allocation, but they also tell you that in answering your questions, you should emphasize the line of reasoning that generated your results. Unlike um, other courses and similar to math classes where you have to show all of your work, you want to use that method for AP Macro. Secondly, it says include correctly labeled diagrams. And this is really, really important because if you do a supply and demand graph and you are missing, for example, price on the y-axis, then you're not going to get a point for that graph, whether the whole thing is correct with the exception of missing a label. So you want to be careful. And the thing that is, might be frustrating to students is that I will be very nitpicky with that stuff in the classroom. So I want you to get in the habit of having high expectations, so that's what we do all the time. So just to give you an idea of what a long FRQ looks like, this is what we're talking about. So these are all the tasks that are involved. Um, I'm not going to go through this with you right now because there's no need for us to, but essentially what we've got here is a question that's going to bring us through many different concepts of the course. And you can see that there's a lot of little tasks to do here. And essentially, um, these FRQs are typically worth anywhere from 9 to 12 points. So they, they've got a lot of points here. Now, you'll see that the second FRQ, and let me just highlight it here for a second, is a lot shorter. And it's uh, interesting in this one, it's really about um, something that we'll learn about later in the class about the demand for money and something called the money market graph. So it's short, it's uh, mostly graphing involved here and really just very basic answers. So if you just look at B, it says given the interest rate change in part A, what will happen to bond prices in the short run? That has a very e simple answer the bond prices are either going to decrease or increase. That's all you have to write. You do not need to write a full sentence. You don't need to explain why. It doesn't ask you to explain. However, notice in the next one, giving the interest rate change in part A, what will happen to the price level in the short run, that's going to be an increase or decrease answer coupled with the explanation. So you want to pay careful attention to what they're asking you to do. If they're asking you to explain, you need to make sure that you explain. And typically, the explanations are another point by themselves. So I would anticipate in number two, there would be a point here for whether or not the price level is increasing or decreasing. And then secondly, there'd be another point for the explanation. The third FRQ here on this exam is about international trade. So in the last unit of the course, we learn about um, exchange rates and how different currencies are in supply or demand in relation to others. And this question, while you might look at it right now and think, I wouldn't even know where to begin, in a couple of months, you will think that this question is actually pretty easy. So don't worry about it at this point in time, but I just wanted you to see how it is structured. So that's pretty much what we're looking at with an AP exam. Again, think about how the time is allotted. You have 60, 60 minutes um, for your FRQs. You have 70 minutes for 60 questions in the multiple choice. 
keep in mind of the two thirds, one third score. And again, in our class, we'll be doing 20 multiple choice. That will equal about two thirds of the score. And it's an approximation. You know, the, F, the, the college board uses some pretty complicated weighting to uh, weight the exams. And typically the, the multiple choice is around 63.33 something of the, of the score. So what I do to make things a little simpler for you and for me, I just take whatever you got out of 20 and I'm going to multiply that by three. Okay. Um, and you'll get a score out of 60. Okay. Um, and then what we'll do is I'll take whatever you got out of the free response question and, um, and multiply that accordingly. And sometimes what I'll do is I'll take that out of 30 points and then whatever you got out of 90, um, would be your score. So, you know, sometimes the, the weighting is a little bit different and I might give you a couple of more multiple choice questions just so you can get used to working a little quicker in the 25 minute interval. But for the most part, we're going to stick around 20 questions. And again, I really just want you guys to get in the habit of feeling the time and getting yourself accustomed to not just answering the questions, but to really devoting the time to the more difficult tasks and really speeding through those ones that are easier. And for the most part, kids felt pretty comfortable with this last semester and we did really well. So um, I'm looking forward to you guys getting ready for your first exam. Remember that you've got all of those review activities that are on the website, on the Connect site, and that you've also got a lot of opportunities in your textbook itself. There are questions woven throughout the chapter, and there's also a lot of great things online. For example, Sparknotes has a good site, um, and also there's a lot of videos out there. So if you're somebody that's kind of sick of reading and you want to do a little bit of listening and watching, hop onto the Aspen page and take advantage of all of the videos that I have linked on there. So for example, if I hop over to AP Macro, if I go to unit one, everything that's here, um, we've got review questions for unit one, and then there's a separate folders for videos. You guys might be familiar with that already. But lastly, there's also a folder called online study links. And this has a ton of stuff that not only is um, will lead you to things group by topic, but also will bring you to things that are cumulative for the whole course. So I hope this was very helpful for you guys. And sorry, I couldn't be in class today, but this was important information that we had to relay and touch base on. And hopefully this was understandable and we will be ready to roll when I see you next time.